Alright, this video is going to take care of objective 75 and 76. We're going to do this in two parts. This is going to be part one for prime and composite numbers and factors. This part is going to be on the numerical part, so it's just going to be numbers. The second part will be on algebraic, so it will be uh, letters involved with that with powers. Some of the terms that we want to talk about, and these will carry over to part two as well, are prime number, only one in itself can go into the number. A composite number, more than one in itself can go into the number. A neither number is considered zero and one. Factor, two numbers that go into a number equally. And we'll talk about those as we go through this. Greatest common factor, also known as GCF. This is the largest number that is a common divisor meaning it divides into it, of a given set of numbers. So those are the terms that we're going to talk about and use within our examples today. So our first example. Prime numbers, this would be like 2, 3, 5, 7, uh, 11 would be a prime number, 13. What you may want to do is, after this video is over, go on the internet, or and find a chart that gives you all the prime numbers from uh, basically 2 to probably 250 to 500. Print that out, bring it into class because there are going to be some questions dealing with prime numbers between these numbers. A composite number would be 4, 8, 12, not necessarily an even number, 25 is a composite, 15 is a composite number as well. These are just some examples. Again, if it's not prime, it's composite. The only two are neither are 0 and 1. We're going to also use the prime factor tree. So an example of the prime factor tree is we're going to take the number 30. We want to think of two numbers that are going to multiply to be 30. That gets us 6 and 5, and it doesn't matter which order you put them in. We can still break down 6 because 6 is a composite number. 5 is prime, so you'll see a little dot or a dash underneath the number. We have a 3 and a 2, or 3 times 2 gives us 6. So these are the prime factors, or prime numbers, which are also factors of the number 30, and that's 2, 3, and 5. For the other one, 24, we chose 6 and 4. You could choose 8 and 3, 12 and 2. We just chose, I chose 6 and 4. 6 is not prime, neither is 4, so we have to break it down again. So we have 3 and 2 for 6. 2 and 2 for 4, and again where you see these lines, little dash lines underneath it, that's kind of where your tree stops because it's a prime number. So our prime factors or prime numbers for 24 are 2, 2, 2, and 3. So if we multiply these together, we'd get 24. If we multiply these together, we'd get 30. From there, we're going to find the greatest common factor. So we have GCF. We're going to, I'm going to show it to you the grid, and those are going to be in the room. I'll show you where those are at. But our grid is going to be, we're going to fill in our numbers. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. Everything in here is a prime number. You cannot put a composite number in. So if you can still break that number down, you need to do that. So if we look at 30 and 24, which is our examples here, these are our numbers that we're going to put in. Now it's important that when we put and establish the number in the column, this number for 2, we put a 3, put a 5, the only numbers that can go in this column are 2's, the only numbers that can go in this column are 3's, 5's, 2's, and 2's. So if you don't have that, you're going to miss out or you're not going to be able to put them in there and you're going to have to add another column to that. So if you notice, we have our factors for 30 are 2, 3, and 5. For 24, we have 2, 3, 2, and 2. Now you notice we have some x's in here. We do not have a 5 that goes into 24, and we don't have the other two 2's that go into 30. So if these are filled with x's or they leave them open, we are not going to bring those down. The only ones to figure out the greatest common factor for this number is if we bring and have to bring down the filled columns. If I have more than one column that's filled, in this case I have 2 and 3, those are filled, I'm going to multiply the two together and that's going to give me 6. 
So the values must be the same in the columns. If not, you have to shift it over. So from there, we're going to look at a couple more examples. So in our example here, we have 14, 12, and 36. Down at the bottom, I did the prime factor trees. So 14, 7, and 2, 12, 3, 2, and 2, 36, 3, 2, 3, 2. And it doesn't matter what numbers you start with, they're going to end up with the prime numbers anyway. So when we put them in, we put them in as 2 and 7. I always like to do mine le uh, least to greatest. For 12, it's 2. This was not another 2. This was a 7 column, so the 2 had to go over a column. And a 3. For 36, we had a 2 here. Nothing here because there's no other 7. A 2, a 3, and another 3. So we had to add another column to it. Again, we're finding the greatest common factor, so it has to be the column that's filled. When you bring that value down, if there's no other ones that are filled completely, that becomes your greatest common factor. So it's an easy way to figure out what your greatest common factor is. Our other example is 17, 21, and 5. Prime factor, or prime factor trees. Notice a 1 is not found in the chart. You cannot put a 1 in here because it's not a prime number. So we put our 17, our 5, our 3, and our 7. Now if you notice here, there are no columns that fill up. If that ever happens, if no columns are filled, your answer for your greatest common factor is always 1. And that's how that one works. So again, no columns are filled. Answer is 1 for your greatest common factor. Our last example, and we can use this for big numbers, and this grid really helps for big numbers is one where we have 230, 175, 450. Our prime factor trees for each of the numbers. Again, where you see the dashes is the end of the prime factor. That's the number that is only divisible by one in itself. So we fill in for 230, we have 2, 5, and 23. The nice thing is if anything ends in a zero, the shortcut is to always drop the 10 out, take the front number, because 23 times 10 gives us 230. 23 is a prime number, so that one takes its own column. 175, we do not have a 2, but we do have a 5. We have another 5 and another 7. 450, we have a 2, we have a 5. We don't have a 23, but we have another 5. We don't have a 7. We have a 3, and we have a 3. So what we have is one filled column of all 5s. That value comes down, and that is now our greatest common factor. So that's a quick, easy way to find the common factors, also the prime numbers using the grid to break everything down. So as you go through this section, probably see a lot of these, use these as work shown examples, and go through them. On the side, you want to make sure that you're doing your prime factor trees. Again, your prime factor trees, you can start with any two numbers. They're going to end up with this. So even if I didn't do 23 and 10, I would have come up with some other combination. So that's our prime factors, our factors, our greatest common factors in the numerical sense. The next part, part two, is going to be the algebraic part of this. And we're going to use the same thing, but now we're going to have letters to powers. So it's going to stem off of that first video that we did with the exponents, and we're just going to start breaking this down into smaller chunks. So there's your grid. Use the grid to help you, and it'll make this thing go a lot easier.